Let's pray. God, we love you and we thank you for this day. Uh, again, Father, we look at it as a gift from you, and uh, we ask for your help as we make the best of it. And uh, Lord, we just ask that during these next few moments of devos that you would speak to our hearts and our lives in your name. Amen. All right. Am I still echoing a little bit? No? All right. Good stuff. Um, I, wanna, I want to... Um, I want to share with you for a few moments on just a personal level, just a little bit of a testimony of of mine. And I know I've shared this before, but I just feel like in the context of uh, this this particular devotional that um, I need to I need to share it again Um, because 12 or 13 years ago, even before my our son passed away, um, I, I went through. Um, a very, very severe depression uh, for for a period of about six months that um, was was really really a dark dark place in in my life and before this before this time um, I had never struggled with depress- depression or depressive thoughts uh, in fact I was one of those that sort of always thought. Depression, that's just in people's head. Pull yourself up by your bootstraps and get over it. It's sort of the way that I was taught growing up. And uh, I, I really thought depression was in people's heads, that it wasn't, it wasn't a real thing. So when, when I went through this, this season of, of depression, it really, it really took me off my feet. I mean, I, I for six months... Uh, Pretty much would lay in a bed during the week and pull the covers over my head and didn't want to be around anyone. Um, and I would did happen to be pastoring a church at the time, so I would get up on the weekends. I would go and go and preach, put a smile on my face, and and preach on on a Sunday morning. And um, we didn't have any other Sunday services, so I'd go back home and pretty much get in bed and uh, hit the repeat button. And that was sort of my life for six months. And um, we, uh, it, it was just, it was a very dark place. And I, I, um, I did, it was so dark that even three times, and I, I really believe that it was a spirit of suicide. Uh, I, I, I believe that because it was like, even in the midst of this darkness, it was like, even this darker place came over me, and three times, three times, I was in a place of just seriously uh, contemplating suicide, where for hours I, I sat and contemplated taking my my own life. Um, once with a gun, once once on on top of a building. Uh, I, I mean, I literally sat sat on the eighth floor of a of a building or somewhere near there uh, for, for like three or four hours uh, just contemplating jumping off. And I mean, I, it, was, it was so dark. Like, I, I can't tell you how real the, the feelings and the emotions were in that. And uh, I, I'd never seen myself as a person who would ever think of, of uh, killing myself, but but these three times were just so, so very, very dark, and it was so real. Um, and then uh, the, the last time, we were taking our, our son, Chase, to a, to a doctor's appointment down in Alabama, and um, uh, which where we live in Tennessee, Alabama is just south of, of the state we lived in. And so there was a specialist down there, and we were carrying our son Chase to this specialist, and I'm, I'm in this van going down this, this two-lane road, and this, this particular road was a road where a lot of cotton was grown, and so you had all of these cotton trucks that were, that were just uh, like 18-wheelers that were carrying cotton from the, from the um, uh, cotton, cotton plant to different places, and so they, they were constantly coming down this road, and all, all I could think of for an hour was, was just tell Tyra to take the wheel of the van and you can jump out in front of one of these, one of these 18 wheelers and you can end it all right here, right now. 
And, and I know that might sound very far-fetched, but I'm, I'm going to tell you, it was so real that, that my hand was literally on the door handle. Um, and that's, that's all I could do for a solid hour. And, and Tyra was listening to a, a preacher uh, on, on, uh, on the radio, and at the end of the, the message, this, this choir came on and began to sing this song uh, about about going ahead and, and something about walking in victory, right? And something came over me in that, in that moment. And it was just like the Spirit of God just, just invaded my life in the midst of this very, very dark moment and, and, and just said, are you ready to overcome this? Are you ready to get victory over this? Um, go ahead and just declare your victory right here and right now. And, and I did the most bizarre thing. I pulled over on the side of the road. I didn't tell Tyra what I was doing. And I just got out of the car and I just began to run through these cotton fields that were muddy, like literally they were just, they were so muddy. I was knee deep in mud, just running through these cotton fields uh, and I, all I could do is just shout victory, victory, victory over and over again. And cars and 18 wheelers are going by honking their horns. And I know I look like a total idiot. Um, but in that moment, in that moment, uh, God healed me from that depression that I was going through, that I had been going through for six months. God, God totally healed me. And I never had I never had another uh, a, another bout with depression since since that time. Uh, now, fast forward six months past that, then our son passed away, um, and and I did go through another very dark time of, but but it wasn't a, a depression, but it was one where. I really, I, I really began to question my faith and question God. And so I, I first went through a, a, a crisis with depression, but then six months later when our son died, I went through a crisis of belief where I, was, I wasn't sure if, if, if I was really buying into this idea of God, if I was really buying into the promises that he gave us in the, in the Bible. It just didn't feel real to me. It didn't feel good to me. I just, I, I wasn't there. And, and literally, that was another battle and another crisis in my life that that when I walked through uh, for, for another year with that, I, I sat on a, on, a, on a shrink's chair every week uh, and, and went through therapy after therapy, counseling session after counseling session to just help me through uh, this time in this crisis of of belief and this this doubt that I was having in my mind, and it was it was another very very dark uh, dark time. But I always I always thank the Lord in that process that I was graced with that depression uh, and and came out of it six months before my son passed away because I I, I often would think, wow, if if I would have gone through the depression with my son passing away, I often think, would I have been strong enough to fight those urges that I was feeling of, of suicide? Would I have been strong enough? Would that, would that valley have been much deeper? Would, would that season have been much darker? And, and I don't know the answers to, to that, but I just know that, that I'm sort of thankful for the way that God positioned those seasons in my life and gave me victory over one that I think gave me strength even in, even in a, a, a time of, of crisis. I still felt this strength that came from God uh, even when I was doubting Him and, and questioning Him. So I sort of navigate through, through that, that time of crisis of faith, and I, I, it, it really took me several years to really fully break through that and uh, get back to a place where I could say, you know what, I don't understand God, but I fully trust Him. Uh, I, I didn't get to that place for several years after my son passed away. I mean, I would stand in the pulpit and preach the, the, the Word, and, and I would say what I know I needed to say, and I would hope 
to some level that I, that I really believed it, but I wasn't even sure I, I believed it. I probably didn't need to be preaching it, but I, I would get up and I would preach it and I would just hope that, that somehow, uh, somehow, some way, that uh, people, people would receive it, even though I wasn't sure if I bought into it fully. So a few years later, I find myself overcoming that, and I'm sitting in a room with, a, with a, another preacher one day, and after both of those episodes, God did sort of give me this unique ability to, I say unique, I don't know if it's unique, but I did begin to have the ability after these two times of crisis, several years after, just uh, to begin to look at life differently. Like things didn't get to me the way that it might get to, to some people. Stress wouldn't, wouldn't necessarily bother me on the level that maybe it would others. And, and I'm sitting with this one preacher and he's saying, man, you, you have this ability to sort of be positive. Uh, and he says, I just need to know your, your story. And, and I begin to tell him my story. And this preacher looked at me. We're actually sitting in the sanctuary of my church. And I won't tell you the exact words that he said, um, but it was basically this. He said, you, you, know, you know what's going on in your life. Um, your give a care has walked out of the room. And, and he actually said another word instead of care. Um, your give a has walked out of the room. And he said, you know, the truth is, he said, it's a very liberating day in any of our lives when our give a care walks out of the room. And, and that's always stuck with me. And, and it, it reminded me of this. And as I process what he said, why is it that, that sort of my give a care in a lot of ways walked out of the room? Well, I think there were two lessons that I learned through this struggle of grief and depression in my life um, that I just want to give you before we get into Elijah. And I'm going to have to move through Elijah quick because we got six minutes here. Um, <laughs> No, number one, um, each day, each day really is a gift. Each day is a gift. Um, you know, when I look back at just having four years with my son, it wasn't long enough. It, it, it wasn't long enough. But every one of those days for those four years truly was a gift. And rather than mourning the fact that I don't have more, I had to lean into cherishing what I did have. Um, secondly, I, I had to come to the place where I realized there is nothing worth my worry. There is nothing in this world that is worth my worry. Um, nothing. Like Jesus, Jesus took it all. Right? And we're going to talk about that over the next two weeks in these, in these, in these devotions. Uh, that Guys, there is, there is nothing that is really worth our worry. Most of the things that we worry about anyway really don't even, don't even have a reality to them. We are worrying about things that we don't know the outcome of. And most of the time, we're, we're worrying about things because we're putting a worst case scenario on the, on the end result, which usually is not the case. Um, as we learned through Monty Python, it's always good. Anybody get a good whistle? Anybody whistle good? It's always good to look on the bright side of life. All right, there you go. All right, all right. Everyone else is just lost, Clarissa. Uh, all right. So here's, here's what we know about, about depression. Uh, 300 million people around the world are battling depression. Um, it's estimated that at least 15% of the adult population will experience depression at some point in their, in their life. So what does that tell us? That tells us, guys, this, this is real. And if you're not going through it, if you haven't been through it, you need to know this because it's guaranteed that somebody in your circle of influence has or will go through it. And you need to know it's real. And you need to know how to be there to minister to them and to love them through it. And not to, not to say what I had said to me all growing up, it's in your head, just pull yourself up by your bootstraps. That sounds good when you're not the one in it, but when you're the one in it, 
you can't find the bootstraps. All right? And so you're either going to go there, you're going to know people that do. And our response in those times is, is so very critical. I remind you that, that Elijah was a man just like us, right? And that's who we're talking about in these devos. And Elijah was a man who battled depression. And we find this, this story in uh, 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 chapter number 19 of 1 Kings. When he came to Beersheba in Judah, he left his servant there. And while he himself went a day's journey into the desert, he came to a broom tree and sat down under it and prayed that he might die. He's this great man of God. Now he's praying, I might die. I have had enough, Lord, he said. Take my life. I am no better than my ancestors. Then he lay down under a tree and fell asleep. Let me just give you four quick ways that you can get depressed. Not that any of us need help in this, but here's four ways that you can guarantee you're going to get depressed. Number one, just wear yourself out. Just wear yourself out. Just doing, 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 doing. You'll notice over the, the past few years of, of Elijah's story, it was spiritual battle. After spiritual battle, it was praying, trusting God, praying, seeking, praying, trusting God, battle faith, runs for his life. I mean, he is just constantly just going, 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 right? And geographically, uh, he could not have ran farther than he did to this place that he ran on the very, very southern tip uh, of this country, and he, and he and what does he do? He he leaves he leaves his buddy behind, the servant, and he and he just runs a day's journey further into the desert, um, and and just we can see Elijah was just plum worn out, uh, and he just cries out to God, Lord, just just take my life. You know, I I say that to you because guys, it's not only possible, but I I think that. Uh, one of the greatest, one of the greatest uh, places that we can find ourselves just plumb worn out is doing the Lord's work, because we convince ourselves because we're doing the Lord's work that we don't necessarily need replenish. Right? God, God will take care of us. We're doing His work, but we have to remember, even Jesus had to get in the boat and go to the other side of the lake and get away from people. Right? And, and so it's so important that as we're doing the Lord's work that we don't forget to be replenished in our own faith and in our own bodies. It's, it's important that we remember that we can wear ourselves out doing this if we're, if we're not careful. Again, looking at Jesus who even got away from, from the crowds and the people just to have some alone time, which is always good. Right, Kristen? All right. Second thing he did is he shut people out. Look, he abandoned his closest friend. He left his servant and said, just you stay here. I'm going. I'm going ahead. Uh, one of the sure ways to find yourself depressed is to shut others out again. And I know I'm moving quickly through this, but again, guys, it's so easy to do in ministry. It's so easy to do when we're doing the Lord's work, right? And, and here's one of the reasons why. Because we're around so many other people. It never really feels like we're alone. But it's possible in this work that we do to constantly be surrounded by people, but never really let people in. All right? You don't have to let everybody in, but you have to let somebody in. It doesn't have to be everybody, but it has to be somebody because you can't do this alone. God did not create us to journey through this life and to do this kind of work alone. We need somebody who knows us fully and somebody who we know fully, somebody who can love us for who we are with all of our indeficiencies, with all of our issues, and someone who we can let our guard down around. So don't shut people out. Third, focus on the negative. And, and that's exactly what Elijah began to do here. What did he say? I've had enough. I'm no better than my ancestors. Funny thing is no one was even asking that question. I mean, God wasn't saying, hey, where do you line up? Where do you rank with all of your ancestors? No one was even asking this question, but that's how negative his mind was. I'm no better than, I, I'm no better than even all my ancestors. I'm no good here. I should just die he just, even after all of the victories that he had been through, like all of the amazing things that he had seen happen, all of the miracles, he gets to this place. I mean, he, 
He saw God defeat the prophets of Baal, right? He saw God raise the widow's son. He's seen all of this and all he can do is focus on the negative at this point in his life. Always be careful when you find yourself gravitating towards the negative in situations. It might mean, and it probably means that you're not at a healthy place spiritually. It doesn't mean that you're far from God. It just might mean that you're worn out and you... You need to find yourself replenished in the Lord so you can begin to, again, look at the faithfulness of His promises and, and, and the positive things that He has done in your life. And lastly, Elijah forgot God. Uh, all, all that we saw Elijah or, or God do in Elijah, the supernatural protection, the provision, the birds feeding him, the water from the brook during the drought, raising from the dead, the fire from heaven... Oh God, he comes to this place. You're not coming through for me now. It's that what have you done for me lately kind of thing. As if the same God who did all these miracles wasn't powerful enough to be faithful in this, in this moment. Um, so when you find yourself in a, in a place where, where you're forgetting all the good things that God has done and you're blaming him for all the bad that's going in on your life and you lose the ability to focus in on all of his goodness, just do a little mental check. God, maybe, maybe I'm sliding here. Uh, maybe I need to get away. Maybe I need, to, maybe I need to get into my word. Maybe I need to pray because I'm losing track of all the good things that you have done and focusing. Uh, I, I'm forgetting who you are and what you've been in my life. Let me just give you two verses and, and we'll get out of here. Uh, you know these, but Matthew 6, 25. Uh, don't worry about your life, what you will eat or what you're, you will drink or, or what you will wear. Uh, look at the birds of the air. They do not sow nor reap or store in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them, and you are much more valuable than they. You are valuable to God. You have value to God. 1 Peter 5, 7, cast all your anxiety upon him. Because he cares for you. Now, I know this is a little bit depressing when I'm talking about depression because I'm giving you four ways to be depressed. But next week, we're going to talk about ways to overcome these, all right? So just hang with me for these next two weeks. All right, let me pray for you. God, we love you and we thank you so much for your goodness in our life. And Lord, we pray that we would just be aware of some of these maybe indicators of times when we might be uh, sliding into a time of, 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 of emotional depression or just an emotional low, Lord. And help us, help us to see these things, to realize them, and uh, to, to, to find our way, our steering our lives away from these and towards you. Um, Lord, we love you. And again, we thank you for the gift of this day. Help us all to use it well in your strong and mighty name. Amen. Bless you guys.